I'd be lying if I said that I haven't made this mistake, especially as a newer developer. Although I do still see stuff like this occur with more experienced guys and it's no shade on them. It's just, you know, this can be something that's really easy to do. Now, we're going to discuss this today in terms of Next.js, but it definitely applies to just web development in general. So here I have this Next.js page that I created to where it basically has a user right here that we fetch this data from the JSON placeholder API. It's a free API that you can use for testing. And then we return some posts as well. So we make two separate requests, one for the user and then one to get these posts. So if I look at the code right now, you're going to see that I have my just basic Next.js page here to where we render the username as well as my list of posts. And to render the posts, we render this posts component. But we also have two requests here to get the user as well as get the posts. Now, do you see the issue here or kind of the anti-pattern that is going on right now? Well, if we step through this code here, we create this async function called page, and then we call this get user function and we await on this call. So the code is effectively going to pause at this line of code until we return a result from get user. And then it's going to continue on to this line right here. And then we're going to wait, get posts, and it's going to wait to go on until we return the result from get posts. And then it's going to return this component. And if we look at the functions for get user and get posts, what you're going to see is get user just makes this API request to JSON placeholder. But I also use this sleep function just to kind of slow down the request a little bit so we can see what's going on better. And then we return the result. And I do the same thing for get posts. So just an API request that sleeps for three seconds and then it returns the posts. So how long do you think these requests are going to take here? Or how long do you think it's going to take to fully load this page? Well, let's go and check it out. So I'm going to click refresh here. It's going to be 1 to 1,000, 2 to 1,000, 3 to 1,000, 4 to 1,000, 5 to 1,000, 6 to 1,000. So right around 6 seconds is when it stops loading. And the reason for that is because for get user, we sleep for 3 seconds and then we return the result. So it effectively stops at this line of code for three seconds and then returns the result. And then here on this line of code, it stops for three seconds and returns the results for get posts. So in total, it takes six seconds to render this page because we have this waterfall effect going to where we first get the user and then we get the post. Each of those takes three seconds. And that's why we're seeing that our render time here takes a total of six seconds, which is definitely not what we want here, especially considering that these are two independent requests here, meaning we can fetch our posts in this case in isolation of fetching our user. If we needed the user information to get the posts, well, then we might need to do something a little bit different. But since these are two independent requests, there's no reason we need to wait on getting the user in this case to then get the posts. So we should make both of these requests concurrently at the same time. So the way that we can do that is instead of awaiting get user and get posts, we can say const square brackets, and then I'm going to say user comma posts is equal to await and then we're going to use the javascript promise.all function and we need to pass in an array of promises so i'm going to call get user and then i'm going to call get posts so we're effectively returning a promise right here and a promise right here and then once these promises resolve it's going to return the result for our get user 
in the first spot of this array that we're destructuring here and assigning to the user constant. And then in the second spot of this array, it's going to be the result of the resolution of the get posts promise. And it's going to return it in the second spot of the array since it's in the second spot of the array here. And we're destructuring it and assigning it to the posts constant. So this time around, how long do you think this is going to take? Well, if we come back to the page and I click refresh, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000. And you see it takes about three seconds this time. And the reason for that is because we're no longer creating this like waterfall effect to where we're waiting on get user and then we're waiting on get posts. We are getting both of them at the same time, making the requests concurrently at the same time. So it's they're both going to resolve around three seconds. So it's going to take about three seconds to render this entire page, which is going to save us a lot of time here when rendering out these different posts. So the TLDR here is that if you have independent requests in your application, independent network requests, just be cognizant of how you're structuring those requests because, you know, this before, this code that we have, if I command Z all this, this code right here, like, it looks plenty clean, it doesn't look bad, and it's pretty easy to just do something like this without, like, if you're not paying attention, which you know, well, I've definitely done before. It it can be easy to make this page render in double the amount of time that it actually should. And yeah, we use these sleep functions. So you might not even notice this issue until you have someone that's like on their mobile device or they're on a bad network or something like that. And this page just takes forever to load. And it could be something that you don't realize is going on until way in the future. So, you know, when authoring your code, just try to pay attention to issues like this and if you're creating unnecessary waterfalls. So that's all I got for you here today. Thanks for tuning into this one and I will see you in that next one.